Are there any questions for our IT steering committee chair? Chair, um, I think it's uh, management must be congratulated on the fact that they are uh, updating the ECP and the RP and also going Thank to you. seeking codes on the penetration testing. But have there been any incidents of uh, hacking uh, recently? Is that why you are doing it, or is this, are you being proactive? Uh, you've hit the nail on the head. Um, unfortunately, yes, there have actually been um, incidences of hacking. But um, at this stage, I'm happy to say that uh, none of them were successful, so um, our firewall has, 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 with help, has um, sustained those um, adequately. Good. Thank you for that. Further discussion? If we can move to 6.4 and 6.5, and if I could ask Gerard to talk to us on the whistleblowers report and the fraud hotline, you can take it that we've all read the reports, Mr. Hechter. So from a high-level point of view, if yes. you can point out what we should uh, be mindful of from a committee and from a board point of view. Chair, the fraud hotline report, it's for the quarter ended 3 June 2012. Uh, just for a reminder to the committee members, the information provided is recorded on a occurrence book and it then gets disseminated to the old committee chairperson. That is to ensure that uh, none of the issues get suppressed in any way whatsoever. Uh, Positive aspect is issues identified in the same quarter of the previous year were 19 in number, now down to seven. Uh, the nature of the incidents were the following, the fraud in the Nigeria investments, uh, where the investments could be impaired. There's a conflict of interest in the Teletech investments, which was uh, uh, reported on the fraud hotline. There was a theft issue, inventory through demonstration stock. And then one of the reasons why I mentioned earlier we probably need to bring forward an HR audit. Unethical practices, abuse of travel claims by senior management of their office, nepotism committed by HR director and the appointment of staff. Remember these are all allegations. Irregularities, unauthorized leave by employees, particularly management, and fraud allegation of ghost employees in the Nigerian operations. Uh, but basically that covers the, the fraud hotline. Then the ethics line, we had one issue, which is a, of concern. The issue related to the appointment of certain staff members in the head office. The caller reported that uh, the COO uh, was responsible for having her husband's cousin appointed into the organization. The allegation is that there is no qualification, skills, or experience that this particular individual has in order to make her appropriate for the role and that she was preferred over other more qualified candidates. Uh, it is also alleged that due to this appointment, uh, some large contracts were lost, including a contract uh, with MTN. That uh, is also an issue that she could influence, the COO could directly influence human resources because as uh, she reports directly to the CEO, uh, nobody else is directly responsible for ensuring that the appointments that she makes and the actions that she takes uh, are properly scrutinized. So uh, that is currently uh, the only issues that came to the ethics line. It does sound quite serious, the pervasiveness of uh, ethical breaches and the worry that uh, this does have, what if it breaks in city press over the weekend or in the Mail and Guardian on Friday? Do we have a crisis response that we have developed to address uh, some intrepid journalists that would approach us? Uh, Chair, I think the, the concern is that initially when we did the risk assessment together, we did not deem HR to be a significant risk. And the sort of information that has now come to light would indicate that that was an erroneous call. Uh, HR is actually quite risky in the organization and uh, it needs audit attention from both uh, probably risk management and internal audit. At, uh, and, and you've shared this with the CEO as well. I'm on top of the issues, but the CEO. That is correct. That is correct, Mr. Chair. Um, I can confirm and I, we concur with the requirement for an HR audit, which I think will help us um, confirm or give us some level of comfort around the HR policies and the implementation thereof. We are also um, undertaking to ensure that our employees sign um, uh, as a commitment, uh, indicate their commitment to 
uh, anti-corruption policies and to our code of ethics where we will actually get employees to physically sign their commitment to this as, a, as an indication that they are fully aware of what our code of ethics is and of what we require and expect um, by way of certain behaviours from our employees. Thank and you. Then, uh, given the fact of the information in the ethics report, Chair, uh, the CEO has also requested that a particular focused audit of forensic nature be conducted on the HR appointments made in the recent past. Good. We support that. Chair, just to add, I think uh, the seriousness, as you said, of the issues that have been reported here warrant the fact that uh, next, at the next audit committee we have a progress uh, as an audit committee. I'm sure you'll be appraised as time goes on that we would like to keep track of how these are resolved. And if there's anything that escalates between now and the next scheduled audit committee meeting, if you could inform us uh, so that we could circulate that and if the audit committee needs to convene a special meeting to address the seriousness of the issue, <coughs> we will convene such a meeting. Will do, Chair. Thank you. Chair, I would also like us to note that um, the sale of talent tech should be put on hold um, and we should recommend to the board that it should be put on hold until we deal with the conflict of interest. CEO, you on top of that issue? I am in agreement with that. Thank you. Thanks for the committee reports, ladies and gentlemen. Feedback from external audit. Mr. Patel, we've had a pre-meeting. We've discussed the matters with you. It appears to be a clean report, but if you could give us high-level feedback and you can take it uh, as having been reviewed, the report that's included in the pack. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, before I start, I'd just like to uh, declare our independence. Uh, from the planning stage to the final stage, we still regard ourselves as independent. Our planning materiality has not changed. It's still at 12 million um, on conclusion of the audit. Um, also, just to remind the Chair that uh, the subsidiaries, Beta and PSI, are regarded as immaterial, hence you won't see anything in the report regarding those two subsidiaries. Um, the high-level issues, Chair, in terms of the key audit risks, um, Alpha Technologies, the net book value calculated by management was 32 million. In the financials, we've got it as 25 million, and we've taken 4 million, uh, I mean 6 million, 7 million to the uh, overs and under schedule. Um, there was an issue on um, goods in transit, transit that was mostly regarding a cut-off issue. Management has corrected that. There was a 25 million rent adjustment that was passed through. Some of the other significant risks was the valuation and investment in Alpha, which I've just discussed. The inventory provision, uh, we've looked at the obsolescence provision. It's 8.2 million, and we're happy with that provision after the stock count was done. The going concern, um, Chair, there is a detailed report that's going to be discussed by the CFO, but we've looked at the assumptions and we've stress tested that, and we're happy that the uh, uh, entity is a going concern. Goodwill impairment, we've also looked at uh, um, uh, the goodwill calculations, and we're happy that goodwill does not have to be impaired. Uh, the credit facilities, we are, we are happy with the, with, uh, the recoverability around uh, accounts receivable. There is credit insurance in place. Um, so as, as we sit now, there is no risk in terms of recoverability around the accounts receivable. Um, the demo stock chair was another issue. Um, there was an, there was an um, error in terms of rec uh, recording demo stock as a sale as opposed to as inventory, uh, but there was an amount of 5.2 million that was passed by management bringing the demo stock back to inventory. In terms of the judgmental areas that we've uh, covered here is the material ones are the bonus provisions and the useful life around the assets. We looked at the assumptions. We're happy with the assumptions that managements have used and we're happy with the numbers in the financial statements. As there were no exceptions noted. Um, Chair, then, with regards to the IT issue, uh, internal audit has raised uh, quite a few findings around IT. Uh, some of the findings we've raised over and above that was the issues around passwords and segregation of duties, uh, specifically regarding the CFO's access to PASTO. What we've done there is uh, we've increased our sample sizes regarding um, the general ledger that, uh, that the CFO has access to and also looked at log reports in terms of what changes were made to PASTO. And we were happy that uh, there were no material changes made by the CFO. However, uh, we have given CFO uh, best practice in terms of what he can do regarding segregation of duties. So then uh, to go uh, back uh, into, into the detailed report in terms of our uh, unadjusted um, errors, Based on our materiality, uh, we don't think there needs to be any adjustment. The total adjustments come out to about 4 million. Our materiality is 12 million, so we're happy with that. Um, in terms of our analysis of our professional fees, uh, there is no overrun to discuss. We met budget. However, there was non-audit services that were done by us, uh, but it works out to 12% of our total fee. 
And the uh, mandate given by the audit committee was we shouldn't exceed a limit of 25% of our audit fee. Uh, in terms of taxation, uh, our tax experts have looked at the accrual for taxation and there were no exceptions noted. Um, <coughs> Chair, and then um, in terms of uh, any new impacts in terms of standards, uh, management has not changed any accounting policies and not adopted any new, new uh, statements that's going to be impacting from next year onwards. Uh, overall, Chair, I'd like to thank the CFO and the CEO for their cooperation during the audit. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Patel, for that report, and thank you for the value adds that you've included from a taxation update as well as the new standards. I think the members of the audit committee certainly appreciate uh, being kept up to date with current uh, disclosures.